right, sorry about that. On that last video, uh, I was going to do this solution and then I cut it off by mistake. You might want to pause the, the video at this point and look at my solution and make sure yours matches mine. For lambda equals negative 1, for my basis, I found negative 1, 1, 0, P1, and P2 was negative 1, 0, 1. Now you could switch the order here and call the you know, call them different names and that wouldn't matter. Then for lambda equals 14, I went ahead and solved a minus 14i times x equals zero. And after I reduced and I put dot, 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 because it took a couple steps, I ended up with this matrix. And so we get one eigenvector in this basis, just the single vector one, one, one. So let's call this P3. Then, for our D, all right, since there are two eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equals negative one, I'm going to have to put negative one on the diagonal twice. All right, and then there's one eigenvector for lambda equals 14, so I'll put that in last, and there's my diagonal matrix, and then for P, we have to match the entry. So since I put 14 in last, I need to put P3 in as my last column. And for the two first two columns of P, I can put P1, P2, or I could switch it and do P2, P1. It wouldn't matter because they're both eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equals negative 1. So I'll go P1, P2, negative 1, 1, 0, and negative 1, 0, 1. And so that would be one, you know, possible answer. And if I wanted D with, let's say, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 14, 0, 0, 0, negative 1, then my P would be, I'd need to move this third vector into the middle. And then it wouldn't matter, I could put P1 in first, negative 1, 1, 0, and P2 in third. Or I could put P2 in here, I could put P2 there and P1 there. I just have to match the order to D. All right. And then we're going to do one more example here, and then I'm going to cut the video off and start again. Um, Suppose we have a matrix and we're given a diagonalization of it. So here A can be written as P, D, P inverse. Use the diagonalization theorem to find the eigenvalues of A and a basis for each eigenspace. So this one's really short because all the work's been done for us. This is our P, this is our D. Now this is P inverse, but we don't even need that. We just need D and P. So D is the diagonal matrix in the middle, and the eigenvalues are listed on the diagonal. So for lambda equals 6, a basis for the eigenspace is these two columns, negative 2, 0, 1, and 0, 1, 0. And then for lambda equal 5, which is our last eigenvalue, a basis for the eigenspace is this third column of P, negative 1, 2, 0. So this, um, this section is actually going to have three videos because there's the first one and then this one, which I meant to go with the first one, and then I'm going to put conditions for diagonaliz diagonalizability on as the last video for this section, and it'll be pretty short.